a Pantry Studio production. The following may contain strong language and deals with adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. You know, I have people tell me that God has a plan for everything and everything happens for a reason. I don't know that I believe that. Um, why would God want my husband to be murdered? She's been missing since July of 2015. And her father, Tommy Ballard, was shot and killed only 16 months later. Five years later, the search goes on. And broken hearts are still broken. For six years, everyone in Bartstown, Kentucky has driven past the signs keeping the thoughts of Crystal Rogers' disappearance in the front of their minds. Crystal's mom, Sherry Ballard, says that she hopes that she'll be getting answers soon, those answers that she so desperately needs. The pain and the heartache of a loving mother continues to grow more with the passage of time, not less. As a matter of fact, it's only gotten worse. I sincerely hope that you cannot imagine what that's like has to be a living hell on earth that no one would ever want to endure. These are what the nightmares are made of. Not only did she lose her child and has no certainty at all as to exactly how or what happened, or even why it happened, but just 503 days later, just 16 months, on November 19, 2016, Sherry then lost her husband Tommy and apparently once again to someone else's hands by gunfire. Well, he was on his own property nonetheless, and that left little doubt that this was related to her daughter's disappearance. Could it also be related to the other Bartstown murders? In 2013, Jason Ellis, a police officer, gunned down on exit ramp 34, just off the Bluegrass Parkway. A year later in 2014, mother and daughter, Kathy and Samantha Netherland, found shot, cut, and bludgeoned to death in their own home. 2015 saw Crystal Rogers go missing, and then in 2016, Crystal's dad, Tommy Ballard, was murdered in cold blood. Is there anything that we would not do for our children? Well, that answer is a solid no for most people. Most people will do anything it took to ensure their safety. But when the unspeakable happens, and it does sometimes, well, at that point, Tommy did what most any of us would do. He went looking for answers. These are the Mountain Mysteries, and this is Episode 18, Bardstown, Kentucky, Part 4, A Father's Love. The Mountain Mystery of Tommy Ballard. I will be the last to fall. I won't shed a tear for them to see. I won't have your name to call. I will be. There are over 1.9 billion square acres in the United States alone, and 24% of those are mountainous. The secrets that these regions hold are enormous. Reports of mysterious creatures, strange sightings and sounds, ghosts and murders, and those who have seemingly vanished. There are questions that need asking and answers worth finding. These are the Mountain Mysteries. Here's Chris Sloan. Remember online you can find the Mountain Mysteries at themountainmysteriespodcast.com. Listen to episodes, order your Mountain Mysteries gear, and a lot more. That's at the Mountain Mysteries Podcast.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Mountain Mysteries and join us live Thursday nights for The Mountain Mysteries Gatherings.
you know, I don't, I don't believe there's a reason for that. Um, I don't blame God for that at all. I never have, not from day one. I mean, I may think, God, why'd you let this happen? I mean, I can't say that's never in the back of my mind happened, but I've never, I, I've, I'm just, I don't go there. I've never did that. Um, I don't know what's gonna become of all this. Um, I hope to bring my daughter home. I hope it's to open the eyes of law enforcement and everyone in this town as to what's going on really in this town. Um, I mean, Barstown's a pretty town, it is. It could be better. Uh, no one wants this hanging over Barstown's head. I don't want that. I've lived here my whole entire life. But somewhere people are pushing stuff in the back and ignoring it, and that's don't sit good with me at all. So I hope people are aware of what's happening and things will get better. And no family ever has to go through what my family has been through. Who knows? Maybe he was trying to clear a troubled mind, trying to get those persistent thoughts and doubts about what happened to his daughter out of his head. His daughter was Crystal Rogers. What had happened and by whose hands and maybe he was trying to figure out as to why, how, and even where. Where was his daughter, this mother of five? Oh, he felt he knew exactly who was responsible for this, for the nightmares his family were being put through, that living hell and torment, and wanted to see them pay more than anything knew it in his very soul. That, states Sherry Ballard, is the reason why he was killed. He was getting close to something. It was 2016 when Tommy Ballard got there early in the morning hours of November 19th with his grandson with him at a field owned by his family. That's when he was hit in the chest with a round shot from a rifle. As you can imagine, his grandson was traumatized. The Kentucky State Police are still looking into the shooting and haven't released much in the way of details, but news reports following Tommy Ballard's death indicate the shooter was likely hidden in a tree line near the Bluegrass Parkway, which runs along the property line. Tommy's killing is believed to have been a targeted assassination from the way it looks, but police have come short of calling it just that specifically. Sherry said that she thinks that the objective of the killer was to stop the family's hunt for justice by removing the head of the family. And to a certain degree, it did. Sherry said that she can't devote the same sort of time and effort and energy that Tommy did to physically searching. Uh, she doesn't have the personal connections that her husband had developed over years of business and personal dealings. And that makes this thing even more difficult to solve. Now, of course, the chin wag for some time now has been that all of these five cases are somehow interconnected, woven together with threads of lies, deceit, and even murder. Wouldn't be surprising to find that out now. But if the murderers thought eliminating Tommy would overturn the family's resolve completely, oh, they were wrong. Sherry said she'll never let this thing go. She said she can't physically get out there and do what Tommy did because she has other obligations where he had maybe a little more free time than she does now with the kids, but she's adamant that she'll never drop this. She stated she wants justice for her husband and daughter. She doesn't have a lot of insight into any advancement made on her husband's case. She did say that the Kentucky State Police detectives are working the case and they've not been too proactive in keeping her informed. Oh, she asks every so often, but they tell her that they're working hard and waiting on tips to come in. Well, back then, when she initially said that, the Nelson County Sheriff's Office was investigating Crystal's disappearance, and then the FBI stepped in. Sherry said that she is more hopeful now than ever of a resolution in that case. She said that as far as Tommy's case goes, if she was depending solely on that, she wouldn't be real hopeful. But she believes that once her daughter's case gets broken, that 
will lead to justice for her husband. She continued to state that she knows that it's going to happen. She said, quote, I know I say this all the time, but I have to be very patient, and that's not easy for me to do, end quote. Well, as they say, patience is a virtue, a quality that may be best built during the most testing and troublesome times of our lives. But there has been some new information come to light recently. It seems in August 2020, Human remains likely belonging to a woman were found in Nelson County, not far from where Rogers was last seen alive. And although a lot of people thought that that could be Crystal's remains, it turns out that it wasn't. Since then, the FBI announced that it was taking over the investigation into Rogers' disappearance. Ballard says that she believes this could be the moment her family gets the answers that they so desperately need. She stated that she feels like she has a chance now at getting justice for her family and that she doesn't focus as much on Tommy's case because she believes 100% if they settle Crystal's case, they will have her husband's case in hand solved. The FBI's Crystal Rogers Task Force added Tommy Ballard's case to its website as well as the murders of Bardstown police officer Jason Ellis and mother and daughter Kathy and Samantha Netherland. Ballard says she believes her husband and daughter are looking down on what's going on, happy with these developments. She said that they think that they would be very proud. The fact that they're not just sitting around doing nothing. She also said that she's very saddened by the fact that Tommy is not there with her. She watched that man make it his life's mission to bring their daughter home. And she asked, how can I not follow up with that? How can I not do that? I have to do it for my husband and daughter. As if the pain of losing your daughter and husband weren't enough. It was in February of 2021 that a judge denied Sherry the right to visit her grandson. According to court documents, Judge Stephen Hayden said that there's clear and convincing evidence, significant hostility exists between the Ballard family and Crystal Rogers then boyfriend, Brooks Houck. Now, Brooks Houck is the father of the child and primary guardian. He's also the main suspect in Roger's disappearance, though no charges have been filed against him. The custody case came about in December of 2015, five months after Rogers disappeared. The Ballards were granted limited temporary visits with a then two-year-old but was later granted visitation in September of 2017. However, the order was reversed by the Kentucky Court of Appeals about a year later and remanded for further proceedings. But it was during that time that a new subsection of the state's grandparent visitation statute became law relating to grandparents seeking visitation with a grandchild when the parent, who is that grandparent's child, is deceased. A new evidentiary hearing was delayed so Houck could challenge the constitutionality of the new state provisions. Well, after a decision from the Court of Appeals, the court found the new provisions constitutional. Oh, but wait. After that court made that decision, the Kentucky Supreme Court found the new provisions unconstitutional. The court held a hearing in September of last year regarding Ballard's motions for temporary and permanent visits, but later denied the motion in October. There has been tension with the Ballard family and Hauk since Rogers' vanishing. Four other children of Rogers, who aren't related to Hauk, did not have any contact with their younger sibling. Judge Hayden said that it was clear that Hauk and his son have a strong relationship and that he is a loving father and greatly involved in his son's life. 
The judge also said that the child's living arrangements are stable and he is well cared for by Halk family members or his girlfriend, Crystal Maupin. Court documents also stated that Halk doesn't want his son to have contact with the Ballard family because he feels it would be detrimental to him. After various hearings, the court believed that both Halk and Ballard came in with wanting to protect the child's best interest, but said they have differing opinions as to what is in his best interest. Judge Hayden said that the court finds that hostility between Halk and the Ballard family poses a significant risk of emotional harm to the child. He believes that it is reasonable for Halk to deny visits to protect the child. At one point, there had been a gag order on these particular proceedings, but apparently not now, or Sherry Ballard is just tired of being quiet about it. What can I lose? How convenient is it of the courts for me to sit here and be quiet and just take everything they dish out to me? And I refuse to do that anymore. I'm not losing anything because I'm not getting anything. Still unsolved 2016 shooting death of 54-year-old Tommy Ballard is the most recent of four killings and a disappearance that have haunted this beautiful small town of Bartstown, Kentucky. They include the ambush murder of police officer Jason Ellis back in 2013. Then came the brutal double homicide of Kathy Netherland and her beautiful teenage daughter, Samantha. That was just a year later. And then the 2015 disappearance of Ballard's daughter, 35-year-old Crystal Rogers. Long before his death and the loss of his daughter, Tommy Ballard was not a stranger to murder and mystery. It was January of 1979 when his sister, Frida Shireen Cherry Ballard, went missing after she was driving her car in for a repair. She was only 19 years young at the time and seven months pregnant. A week later, her car was found submerged in the Ohio River. In August of 83, her remains and that of her fetus were found buried in the woods. Edsel Eddie Barnes, her estranged husband, and another man identified as George Weir were convicted and sentenced to life in prison for that murder. This case was a factor to Kentucky passing a state law making fetal homicide a crime. Well, the next time disaster rang its doorbell at the Ballard family home was in July of 2015 when Crystal went missing. Now, according to Brooks Houck, her boyfriend at the time, last time anyone saw her was July 3rd. That's where they lived at their home with their two-year-old son, Eli, and other children. Well, it was after Crystal's disappearance that Tommy searched relentlessly to find her. He tracked her whereabouts, found family and friends, and recruited everyone he could to go over a 20-mile radius around Bardstown and acted as an intermediary between the investigation and the press. It was on November 19, 2016, in the early morning, that Tommy Ballard was hunting on family property with his grandson when he was fatally shot. Ballard died from a single gunshot wound to the chest, which exited through his back. Almost immediately, Tommy's widow, Sherry Ballard, went on record to voice her suspicions about his death. Two days after his death, she texted Louisville's Wave 3 News and said that she didn't feel like this was an accident. She would later inform WDRB that in the weeks before his death, Tommy believed he was being followed. She said that she thought someone wanted her husband out of the way because they were getting very close to Crystal, and they knew that he was the driving force behind her. But Tommy's father, Till Ballard, told the same station that Tommy was planning a large-scale out-of-town search for his daughter the week after he was killed. He said that Tommy always said that he'd spend his last dime trying to find Crystal. And then he said, quote, I guess he's found her now, end quote. Police have been tight-lipped about Ballard's death, which has been classified as a homicide. In the absence of any arrest or new information, conspiracy theories have spread like crazy in an attempt to connect the Bardstown murders. It was in August of 2017 that Tommy's brothers, Mike and Roger Ballard, put up a $20,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible for his death. Like Sherry Ballard, they also expressed their belief 
that his death was related to Crystal Rogers' disappearance. Mike Ballard told the Kentucky Standard newspaper that maybe he was close to finding something, or maybe they just felt like he wasn't going to let up. Funeral services were held Friday, November 25, 2016, for Thomas Tommy Marvin Ballard, and he was laid to rest at St. Thomas Cemetery. To this day, Crystal Rogers' whereabouts remain unknown, and Tommy Ballard's case has not been solved. If you have any information, please call the FBI field office in Louisville, Kentucky at 502-263-6000. That's 502-263-6000. The number is also listed in this episode's show notes. Please log on to our website at www.themountainmysteriespodcast.com and learn more, including how you can get the authentic Mountain Mysteries gear, t-shirts, sweats, and so much more. And support us on Patreon so we can keep these stories and more coming to you. Your support is needed now more than ever, and you'll get early access to all episodes and coming soon, the after show events, which will happen strictly for Patreon members after the gatherings Thursday nights on our Facebook page. And again, that's only for Patreon members. I'm Chris Lone for the Mountain Mysteries. Stay mysterious.
if you enjoy the Mountain Mysteries, please subscribe and give us a 5-star rating. That helps us so much. You can also help support the Mountain Mysteries by visiting our sponsors, whose links are below, or by donating at Patreon or the PayPal link shown in the notes. Patreon subscribers will receive early commercial-free episodes and more. Production.